So what we're looking at is uh, what's called the plan view of a roof. Okay? Now it's important you recognize this is the plan view of a roof, not the plan view of a house. Because usually a roof has what we call eaves. Does anyone know what eaves are? Yeah, they're bits that hang over. So in fact, um, if you just have a look across at A block right now, like A21, A27, can you see this, the roof over there? Right, that guy, It hangs quite far past the actual roof itself, like a full meter, maybe a bit more. Okay. So you can see that the size of the roof matters more than the size of the actual rooms inside because the whole roof will collect water. Um, and if the roof like, goes really far out, that'll all collect water as well, even if there's no house underneath it. It's how much roof there is. Okay? Nick, did you have a question? I'll let you answer that question because I already have answered it like two weeks ago. Okay? So think back and if you can't work it out, come talk to me later. Also, don't interrupt me. Now, uh, you've got the size of the roof with all of its dimensions. So if you have a think about this, without actually worrying about like how high the roof goes, this is really just a composite area question, isn't it? So this is why it's a focus study. This is stuff we learned back in MN4, but now we're applying it to this particular example. So the first thing we're gonna do is work out the area of the, of the roof. Now I will point out, generally the roof diagram will show you these like lines here that show that sort of reference the um, going up part, the angles of the, the roof because it's not going to be completely flat. Doesn't matter how high up the roof goes, like if it's like this or if it's like this. Does that make a difference? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Hmm. Ah, okay, now here's the thing, right? If rain is falling down exactly vertically, which I know it's not always, okay, but often it is. If it's falling down exactly vertically, then if you've got a ceiling, a roof rather, ceiling, by the way, if you're, if you're not sure, ceiling is the inside, roof is the outside, okay? Um, if you've got a roof like this, right? versus a roof that has the same area, so like this width down the bottom is the same, but it's only like, it's really shallow, or it could even be flat, okay? There won't be a difference between how much rain gets collected by that. The only difference is, how quickly does the water actually run down the edges of the roof, okay? So therefore you don't need any of the other measurements, just the area is enough. So can we work out, how are you going to calculate the area of this thing? What would you like to do? To composite shape? Um, yeah, we could cut this up. So I think probably a, a reasonable way to cut it up might be, say, that way. Is that okay? So if you have a look, you've got... Or do you want to cut it a different way? No, 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 no. I'm just trying to work out how we cut it. Well, let's have a look at this one bit at a time. My left-hand rectangle, I have all the measurements on that. That's 5 times 9, right? Oops, wrong color. Do you agree? Yep. What about the area of this bit over here? Now look carefully, this is the whole thing, right? Now eight goes all the way across. I added this line in myself. So I've got to work out this bit, which is, yeah, because five and three go together to make eight. Does that make sense? So therefore this part here is just three. With me so far? So, I don't have, I'm actually not worrying about any triangles. All I'm thinking about is actually this shape. Are we just trying to confuse ourselves? Well, they've given you those extra lines to show you, hey, this is a roof. And it like it angles up. But I don't care about the angle. I'm just caring about looking at it from the top. <laughs> Okay, can we work these numbers out? 45 plus 12. We don't need to calculate like that. You sure? Yeah, I'm my calculator. Happy times. Okay. So we've worked out the area. Now we want to combine it with these pieces of information here. Now, what's going on? Uh, this is the straightforward bit. We've already been talking about this. How much rain has fallen? So I'm going to multiply this by this. Okay? That's going to give me a volume of water that's fallen, a volume of rain. But then they mentioned this as well. Uh, what do you think that's about? How much rain went past? 
So the rain is falling on this roof. It's going to collect, be collected by the gutters and then hopefully funneled into our rainwater tank. Is that still okay. allowing for like... But yeah, maybe not all of it's going to make it, right? Like some water will land and then it'll just splash off, right? Um, so I'm going to work out a volume and then I'm going to remove 10% from that figure. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to do that one at a time. I'm going to say total rain. Right, so this is before the wastage. Okay. Now, this is in meters. This is in millimeters. So, what would you like me to do? I'm going to have to change. Which one should I change? You want to change this one into millimeters? Okay. There's a good reason to do that. What's the good reason? Avoid decimals, okay? There's also a bad reason to do it though. I'm not saying we, sh we shouldn't, but it, the numbers become enormous, right? Because how many meters, sorry, how many millimeters are there in a meter? What does milli mean? A millennium, for example? It means a thousand. There are a thousand millimeters from end to end. So if there are a thousand millimeters in one meter, actually I should have picked this back up again, it's not just a thousand this way, it's a square meter, right? So it's also a thousand this way. So how many square millimeters are there in a square meter? There's a million, right? A thousand this way and a thousand this way. Are you following? So my numbers are going to get pretty big. So let's try this. Six times 57, zero, 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 zero. Okay. Now, I encourage you to include those units there because I've just done a conversion and I haven't said it anywhere else, so I'm showing them there. Well, the, the other way is rather than converting this to meters, sorry, this to millimeters, we convert this to meters. Or we could convert both of them to some other unit, like there's centimeters that's in between both. I probably want to convert one thing rather than two of those. Okay, now, six times 57 million, and someone got it. Okay, now it's standard to say actually it's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a small unit there, and also we want to measure uh, with a measure of volume. But if we're talking about water, oh, I do have two rulers. Um, we tend to talk about water in like mills and liters and all that kind of thing, right? So can I convert this? How many mills is that? So actually, this is what I was mentioning before, right? This is actually quite a challenge to work out because you've got to do more unit conversions after this. Let me rewind a second and go into a parallel universe where I didn't convert this to an enormous number. Okay? Where instead of converting this, I converted this. So instead of six millimeters, it's going to be zero point what? How many times do I have to move the decimal place? Three. Is that right? The volume. So, uh, sorry, that's meters now. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply that by 57 meters squared. I haven't changed that. What's that going to be? 0.342. Now, my question to you is, which of these? Because they are the same. It's just the difference of units. Which of these is easier to convert into mils, liters, whatever? I I actually lean towards this one as well. You really can do either, but I think my head starts to hurt when I look at this. Okay, so here now on the side, if you can't remember, one mil. Does anyone know what volume a mil takes up? One millimeter cubed. You need to picture it. Okay, so if you're not very good at picturing um, volumes, then maybe go home, get like a, um, a medicine cup or something like that, they've got measurements on them, um, at this size as well. This is the conversion, okay? It's not very large, it's not very large. So how do I convert, this is meters cubed now. What am I gonna do? So, now that I realize I have two, is when I need three. So, um, Here's my, here's my cubic, sorry, square meter. 
is my square meter. Okay? But it also goes out this way. Okay? So each one of these lines, it's a big, this thing here, this cubic meter, is really big, right? It's, uh, it's this big, it's this high, and it also comes out that far. It's pretty massive, right? So this is actually going to be each cubic meter, each individual cubic meter, is going to be 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. Do you agree? In other words, it's cubed. Okay. So that's one million. Do you recognize that number? The one million? We worked on yeah. that before. It's the same issue, right? So if you've got a cubic meter, it's a million cubic centimeters. So how many mils is that? One million mils. Can I convert that into a more useful unit? One. It's a thousand what? Liters. Which is one kilo. I got there eventually. Um, some of it is. Some of it is. In fact, you should pull it up. Yes, some of it. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm ready to actually do my conversion. So this is zero point three four two what? One cubic meter is one kiloliter. Oh, I see. Done. We just worked out that one cubic meter is one kiloliter. Therefore, zero point three four two cubic meters is it's the same number. Am I finished? Am I finished? Can you can turn that into liters. I can. 242. It says I don't get all of that rain. That's the that's the total rain. Okay. So now what I'm going to finish by saying is. It's times by zero point one. Zero point nine. So if I wanted to work out the rain that was wasted that I didn't collect, I'd go ten percent of that. Okay. If I want to go straight to how much rain do I actually collect, that's what I'm going to write. Rain collected. Uh, 0 0.342 kiloliters. If you lost 10%, what percent's left over? 90%. So you can multiply by 90% if you like. What's that as a decimal? 0 0.9. That's what I would do. Someone got it for me? Please tell me 0 0.3078. Yeah, um, or that that must be three hundred and seven point eight. Yeah.